Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Dresden, with me, Dave Pompaus. It's half five in the morning, we have uh, had a few reports over the time that we uh, recorded our last video. It's been an interesting uh, couple of hours as the turns have moved on. Uh, we have tried to do our best in order to uh, move this court out of the city for reasons that I will be explaining momentarily. But uh, Claparidi's attack, it was a, uh, an attack of two halves. To begin with, we were told that they were up here in this area somewhere and we could hear musket fire. And uh, Claparidi turned around and he said that he had routed two lines, I presume he means blocks, of Prussian infantry already. Um, and I was like, great. As soon as they made contact, they routed a good few men. I mean, obviously, around here, yeah, if they're camped out quite sporadically and what have you, it would have taken a while for these troops to get organized. Uh, so I was like, great, push on, push on. So we got the 100th line up, sent them up to uh, support Claparidi. Now he did mention that, you know, in the, in the scuffle and kerfuffle, his light troops only took a few uh, rounds of ammunition and then they suffered um, a, bit, a bit of a lack of it in the kerfuffle over here. And I thought, given the element of surprise, the 100th line would have taken the light's place and maybe continued this nice little surprise attack. And, and maybe taking the ground here. Uh, but that wasn't to be because no sooner as I got had I got up the artillery in this area and I did want to send the Hussars round. The Hussars weren't ready at the time. They were too sleepy, too lazy. Umpire said, no, that's, that's not going to happen. I was like, right, fair enough. But no sooner had I thought that the 100th line would probably move in and consolidate the gains, maybe spike a few guns. Claparidi was back. It's a little bit of a disorganized attack. I, I mean, I, you know, as a corps commander, I, you know, you could always criticize and say, oh, I would have done it better. But, you know, in, in the darkness and what have you, maybe it wasn't as big as an advantage as I thought, but Claparidi came back and said, yeah, he, he routed a good few uh, of them, but his men just ran out of supplies, ran out of ammo, and he couldn't consolidate quick enough. But at last known positions, he reckons that they had an artillery piece either side of the palace, and he reckons that they weren't being protected by much. So... But he was scared of a counter-attack. A counter-attack from where? I I couldn't say. Uh, yeah, I did I did ask him twice, you know, how, how many men do we think are ahead of us? You know, what's what's the what's the calculation? And he couldn't he couldn't reliably tell us. Um, I think well, I mean I reported to Napoleon that I reckon we maybe shattered about a brigade. But maybe that was an overestimate on my part just because I thought that my attack or yeah, then my attack that I ordered was a stroke of genius and maybe my ego got <laughs> the better of me ever so slightly and Claparidi says only two blocks. But I mean, if we got two blocks shattered and uh, yeah, most of these guys are still intact, it's, it's not such a bad trade. But I have now ordered Claparidi to follow through. Uh, Bertrand's brigade, and I don't have the brigade pieces. Maybe I should, uh, maybe I should create them. 
is around here, and I said to Clapperidi, yeah, get Bertrand up, Tem yeah, and then you've got a brigade to maybe capitalize on, on if this attack with the 100th line goes well. Now, it might go well, we might be okay, but if it doesn't, then he's got Bertrand's brigade coming up in reserve, and then these light infantry can go back into town, have breakfast, because they did a fantastic job. It was a it was a decent trade. So yeah, we expect Bertrand's brigade to be around here somewhere in the next uh, half an hour or so. And myself, I'm going to go up to this uh, hill which I originally dismissed. Maybe we could look south. Maybe see the Austrian lines and see if they've uh, moved it, uh, any guns up to uh, Born and Bothenberg. Uh, these little two hills here. Could be a possibility, could be a thing. Uh, meanwhile, we have asked uh, Rizout also to move up now. Uh, we kept our division commanders, the other two, waiting long enough for orders. So I've ordered Rizout to come in and be kind of like a reserve, ready to take over from Clapperidi when, you know, if he gets a little bit too cold feet again. And then maybe Razout can move on and take the gardens. But we'll, we'll have to see how that develops. And uh, Berthsen over here, I've ordered him to stick a brigade here. Like that. Something, something like that. Ready to maybe make a move on Strella. Now our, our orders were to attack between uh, Zesha, Snitz and uh, Gruner. So we are putting ourselves in a position to do that. Uh, I also, also got word from Napoleon that Van Damme has arrived earlier than uh, originally anticipated or expected. And he is going to uh, join the attack here on the east. Um, it's funny because there has been a few messages uh, swapped in the game between uh, myself and uh, Berthier as well as Murat who Murat is actually in charge of this uh, eastern section of the map. He's uh, kind of running running the attack on on this side and he came over and he was like what on, what on earth is going on why why is there so much uh fighting in the gardens are they attacking and i'm like no it's it's my attack it's my raid attack that i promised everyone in the planning stage uh you don't need to worry it's it's going well enough uh and yeah bertie sent a command wide message as well saying you know, we don't know what's going on in the palace gardens. You know, we're, we're going to get uh, information fr from that. And me, myself, was surprised to get those messages because I, I was like, well, if... You know, I, I, I told people, I, I told them that I was going to do a daring raid at the crack of dawn. It shouldn't have been a surprise, but apparently to a lot of people it was. So there you are. But yeah, it's 5.30 in the morning now. I'm looking forward to seeing how things develop. Uh, and as other cores start to, to move and, and wake up. Uh, which, you know, the game should have started around now, around half five, six o'clock. But because of, because of me, maybe we got a few more turns in. <laughs> but yeah, and then we'll see how... Uh, yeah, the cab reserve and, and, and the guards, how, the, how they do uh, as, as you know, the morning progresses. And when Van Damme uh, shows up, I'm hoping that uh, us kind of moving into this kind of position here might open up a few roads for him to maneuver. I am worried that, yeah, we are quite compact here in Dresden and there won't be a lot of room 
to, to, to move reserves around and yeah, co coordinate enough for, uh, for, for us to, to do a, a sizable attack. Because yeah, as I mentioned, yeah, we are quite com quite compact. Not an awful lot of room to maneuver. So yeah, really, my attack into the into the gardens here is just to free up this pocket here. You know, give a, give a bit of room, give a bit of breathing space for you know some some internal lines to to move around. Because yeah, I mean, my core isn't exactly large. By any means, yeah, it's about about an average average core, but there is cavalry and 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 infantry just clogging this part of the map here. I'm not exactly sure how on earth they're supposed to to move out and attack these Russians, but in any case, we're going to try and give them enough support to do so. So yeah, that's my half five video, everybody. Uh, tell me what you think. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.